with you in the chat sections as well. Before we kick start the evening, we would like to thank our cloud communication partner, Root Mobile, session partner, IAB Tech Lab in partnership with Pubmatic, gold partner, Logic Serve Digital, session partner, Agre, bronze partner, Bobble AI, knowledge partner, Kantar. It's time for our keynote session, winning in the coming MarTech era, driving exponential forever profitable growth. I'd like to introduce all of you to our keynote speaker, who is a technology entrepreneur and a pioneer in Asia's dot-com revolution, Mr. Rajesh Chen. He's the founder and managing director for Netco Cloud Private Limited. Welcome, Rajesh. Over to you. Thank you very much, Neha. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, today's session is winning in the coming market era, driving exponential forever profitable growth. So um, I should cover my themes in about 25 minutes or so, so we can have a few minutes uh, at the end for Q&A. Put your comments uh, and the questions in the box that you have on the right side of the screen. Both in the internet users, of course, as we've known, close to 5 billion now uh, globally, and of course, in internet advertising. But that has not yet resulted in the same hockey stick curve in profits for many companies, especially in India. And part of the reason is that a lot of the money is basically getting spent on customer acquisition. Uh, today, uh, customer acquisition costs are probably the second largest costs for companies after uh, employee salaries. Ad tech, the acquisition budgets essentially take up 90% of marketing budgets, leaving only about 10% for customer retention, growth, and cross-sell. And most of the money goes basically to Google and Facebook. And I think of some of this as really the doom loop of spending because it's also a leaky bucket. Ad costs are rising. A lot of the acquisition that's happening after a certain point of time is are on less valuable customers. And of course, the other problem, which very few talk about, is actually reacquisition. So what's happening is that customers are getting acquired uh, because brands are not spending adequately on maintaining the customer relationship with them. They churn and then they are reacquired. My estimate is that a third of all acquisition is actually reacquisition of churned customers. And we'll discuss later what to do about that. And all of this money spent on Google and Facebook, you look at the results, which came out a few days ago, amazing growth for both of the companies. They've built up massive ad duopoly. So really what's happening is that basically brands are getting gooked instead of customers getting hooked. And that's the problem. This is not the path to profitability in businesses. And we'll talk about how this needs to change. Essentially, the entire focus over the last 15, 20 years has really been on the rise in ad tech. I think the shift now needs to happen about giving MarTech customer retention, cross-sell growth, equal importance. To Planet MarTech, this is the landscape, thousands of companies are in this world doing MarTech solutions. And part of this is being driven in the last few years by the digital customer. So every person pretty much now on the planet has a mobile device, has digital identity, and has a, a data which they are leaving, like data pheromones, uh, which are being left behind when they browse sites, when they are on apps. And that's what brands can basically pick up and build on. And that's the cornerstone for building customer centricity, customer loyalty, and maximizing customer lifetime value. So the three R's of MarTech, retention, reactivation, and referrals. Reactivation is important because many customers tend to become dormant at some point of time. Referrals is important because it's the lowest cost of new customer acquisition that you can get, getting your existing customers to get their friends and family members. But a lot of the focus really all through the years has been on transactions. What is being missed out is the upstream. And upstream of transactions is attention, engagement, and habits. And that is what leads to hooked customers. So many of uh, you all would be familiar with Neer Ayal's book, Hooked, and the framework that he talks about. But it's only a few verticals 
which really have succeeded in getting to the hooked customer stage. Games have done that very well. Social media and messaging apps have done that very well. But there's a lot with more which can be done. B2C, D2C companies, because transactions are not that frequent, they don't have to come back every day. They have been behind. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we get to hooked customers? And there's one very important metric that we can pick up on from the B2B SaaS world. And that's the North Star metric for many B2B SaaS companies, which should become the North Star metric. In fact, for B2C and B2C companies, net revenue retention. Now, if you have a leaky bucket, your net revenue retention numbers are going to be low. So net revenue retention is, if you look at it, say month on month, the number of uh, the revenue which you're generating from your customers this month versus the same cohort of customers, what they generated last month, that's the delta growth. Uh, now, that number should actually come in at more than 100% ideally if your churn is low. If it's not, then it's something which you have to work on. And that's what we'll talk about going forward. So net revenue retention, it's a metric for SaaS companies also to be tracked by B2C and D2C companies. So MarTech done right will lead to hooked customers. And that is the secret for exponential forever profitable growth. It's also profits really are the only foundation to build good to great, great companies, build to last companies, enduring great companies. Because at some point of time, the easy investor money is going to dry up. Investors are going to come and say, show me the profits. Companies have to start working towards that quickly. Martech needs to become a founder, CEO and board priority and not just be limited to marketing departments. Now, there are five problems of MarTech, which we need to look at, which need to get addressed. Attention, there's attention recession out there. Branding, it's being done a lot for new acquisition. Almost uh, nothing is being done on the retention side. There's customer churn. Some churn, of course, is good, especially of maybe the long tail customers. But if best customers churn, that's a problem. We'll talk about that. Data. The customer data ending up in silos and engagement ends up being limited for many brands. How do we solve these five problems? So here in short are the solutions and we'll delve into each one of them. Attention is messaging plus for branding. How do we create email moments? What I call M's. For churn, the answer is velvet rope marketing. Data problem can be solved with a full stack solution and engagement with something called atomic rewards. So let's go through the A, B, C, D, E of the MarTech problems and their solutions. We'll start with attention recession. We've all seen these inboxes, whether it's mail, whether it's WhatsApp, SMS, zillions of unread messages. And in a way, what has happened is our attention span has become that of a goldfish in just a few seconds. You look at the inbox, we are all making up uh, decisions very quickly in just a few seconds, three, four, five seconds, whether to open a message or ignore it. And that's the problem that brands face, essentially that of attention recession. Now, there are a lot of innovations which are coming around, which will actually work on addressing this problem. It's what I categorize broadly under messaging plus these taken together will drive inbox attention. So let's start with email plus. So email plus is about getting mails into the primary inbox. So it's not just about delivery of mails. How do you ensure mails are sent into the primary inbox where the recipient is likely to see it? Bimi, where your brand logo shows up next to the mail uh, on the mobile device in Gmail. Send time optimization, best time to send a message so that the likelihood of it opening becomes uh, high. And AMP, a very exciting new uh, framework from technology from Google, which is basically going to make emails interactive. So think of websites, micro websites within emails. So people don't necessarily have to click through. They can do a lot of interaction within email itself. So that's the next generation of email. SMS hitherto just one way, uh, very limited interaction, just broadcast only. That's also changing. SMS over IP and RCS 
are making SMS is a rich media. Uh, the costs also are likely to come down for sending these kinds of messages and users actually can see rich media in there. Push notifications, how do you get better delivery and smarter notifications and WhatsApp, a lot of changes on the WhatsApp front also. WhatsApp has opened up to marketing messages. You can also create a, a very high degree of interactivity with chatbots. So taken together, the sort of one way broadcast uh, uh, messaging channels, which we are so used to, are now going to become two way and very conversational. And that's good for brands and of course, customers. Moving on to B, B for branding. How do we solve the branding problem for retention? Very, very important because you're spending a lot of money acquiring these customers. You want to make sure that they remember you, they understand what your brand is about. How do we make that happen? There's a very interesting book by Byron Sharp called How Brands Grow. And what Byron Sharp talks about is first the idea of physical availability of brands. So it's about presence. So you look at Coke and Pepsi, they'll make sure they are always available in the physical world wherever you are there. The other idea is that of mental availability. It's about communication. How can you build a relationship with your customers on the through the digital channel? So if, if your logo, if your message is visible to customers on a daily basis, okay, that's what really drives mental availability of, for, a, for a brand. One of the most uh, powerful channels for building this is email. So this is the ROI per $1 spent. Email by far has the best ROI compared to all channels. So here's an interesting idea to look at for doing branding for retention. So there's an idea which I call M's email moments, which can make mails, the mindset when people are looking at mails, go from delete to delight. So it's a new improved format for the micro attention customer. And I've got a few examples coming up. So these are short emails, single mobile screen can be read in 15 to 30 seconds. So a lot of the mails that come in today are sort of long and never ending. And we tend to know about what's coming even before we open the, or think of opening the message. And many times we ignore that. So imagine short mails, you can read them very quickly. They are informative. So it's not all about uh, look at this and buy this and this is what we want to sell to you. No, this is offering something useful. So it's a fresh new format and it's sent daily at the same time, like how we get from some of the media companies. That's what creates sort of the branding in our daily lives, the story format. So here are a few examples. Now imagine Mama doing something like this, sending this mail to you, must haves when you travel with your baby. It's something you'll be very apt to read, very informative. Another example, help your baby relax with the right massage. Of course, there's a shop at link, but you also have a small message which is there. And that link could be then to a video. Now imagine a post purchase. Say you've bought a Nutribullet. Today, very few brands use the post purchase scenario to actually engage with their customers. Imagine if they could send you 10, 15 messages, how to make the best use of the Nutribullet. Big Basket could send you kitchen essentials. Uh, and you can, of course, then add things to cart if you wanted to buy them. Crossword or Amazon, when you're looking at books, today you typically just get a message if you haven't bought saying, hey, here's the book uh, uh, which you saw. Would you be interested in buying it? Imagine for five days, they sent you an excerpt from the book one day, table of contents, maybe reviews, something about the author over four or five days, increases the opportunities for them to sell and for us to buy. And it's welcome content. It's interesting that we'd want to read it. Book My Show could do something very similar. A movie is coming up. Uh, you could, they could actually tell a brief about the story. So it's all pre-purchase, pre-transaction, upstream of the transaction. This is something which my company Netcore had done for Kotak. We used three short emails for reactivating some of their uh, inactive customers. These short emails saw a 40% increase in open rates. It's amazing. That's what short emails do to customers. Three emails sent over three successive days worked magic. So M's are a brand's hotline to customers. Short, informative series and telling a story. 
Moving on to C, how do we solve the churn problem, at least, especially among best customers? And the idea there, I call it velvet rope marketing. There are two terms useful to know, customer lifetime value. Of course, uh, uh, most marketers know about customer lifetime value, but there are more ways to calculate CLV wrong than to do it right. Look up uh, the work uh, from Peter Fader, the customer centricity books, and he talks about this. So the predictive value tells you, you can do segmentation based on CLV, forward looking. Then the best customer genome, take your best customers, what's common to them. And from there, you get the best customer genome. And we'll see how to use that in a minute. Now, understanding the power law of marketing is very important for doing velvet rope marketing right. If you actually analyze, you'll find that 20% customers in most businesses will account for 60% revenue and probably 200% of profits. Okay, this is a chart from Sunil Gupta's book, Driving Deal Strategy, because a lot of the other customers are actually, if you factor in acquisition costs, if you factor in servicing costs, maybe costs of returns, many of them are costing you money. Now, taking care of these top 20% customers becomes very important. The profit number may be 100, 150, 200, will probably definitely be very close to 100. So the top 20% customers, very, very important uh, for, for business profitability. In fact, if you just see this chart, growing the revenue of the top 20% customers by just 20% can lead to a 68% jump in profits. That's how valuable they are. And of course, the converse is also true. Because remember one thing, all other competitors also want your best customers. So what is it that you can do? That's where you need to think beyond loyalty. Think royalty. How do you roll out the red carpet and the velvet rope on the balustrades at the side to give them very differentiated experiences? Exclusivity, ease and access are three dimensions where you can think of these. Imagine the experience that you get uh, when you uh, go to a business class check-in counter. They have a separate team. Think of making a separate business unit for your best customers. But they are incredibly valuable, which are there. So many different ideas on what can be done for best customers. Coming back to the best customer genome, you can use that because that's really telling you what your best customers are about to then work on the rest customers, the other customers. So once you have the ideal customer profile, you can replicate the journey that your best customers take. What is the next best action? Map an existing customer from the rest to someone like the best and then Suggest the next best action, what the action would have been taken by a best customer. You can acquire next customers like your best rather than your entire cohort. And for customers like your best customers, if you get early signals, give them an accelerated onboarding uh, program. So they become part of your best customer pool very quickly. So that's about Velvet Rope Marketing. Think about this for your best customers. But of course, first identify your best customers based on CLV. Coming to D, D for data. Now, one of the biggest problems that brands have is the silos that are there uh, of data. And the solution to that is full stack, and we'll see how. So very important in today's world, especially because the customer can come through multiple channels, there are different departments in a business the customer is interacting with, is for there to be a 360 degree view of the customer because they expect that. They are talking not on an SMS channel, on an email channel, they are talking to the brand. Point solutions are very good, you know, like these trees. Excellent. You can have better points, taller trees, trees with more branches, whatever else. But what you really need to think is a forest where the trees talk together. They create an ecology. That's what you need to think of. Move from the trees to the forest because there are point solutions have problems. The data gets siloed, the unified view is missing, which creates a not so good customer experience. There are costs of integration. Omni-channel experience breaks, AI ML lacks efficacy, and of course, personalization becomes very hard. So not, in, not just about stitching stacks together, but creating a complete unified stack. That's the goal which should be thought of integrating the communications, engagement, and product experience stacks together, powered by a CDP, a customer data platform. 
So this is how uh, we at Netcore think of this. This is an example from our own full stack. Uh, uh, works across, uh, has all of the elements put together in a single stack. And that's really what creates the unified customer view, which is so critical for very good uh, customer experience. Finally, E, how do we solve the engagement problem? And this is where this idea of atomic rewards comes in. Everyone's focused on the transaction. You have a lot of incentives for transaction from the brand to the credit card companies, points and discounts and buy one, get one free, all kinds of things. But if you look at the post acquisition funnel, while everyone's focused on transactions and an exchange of money and money, basically, what's being missed, and that's where the opportunity for smart marketers is, attention engagement habits, it's time. Maximizing time can lead to maximizing money over time. And that's where brands have to think of creating amazing moments in the customer's life. The power of moments is what brands have to think about. It's what you think of when you go to Disneyland. Great experience. You're spending your time there. Games do this very well for anyone who's played Clash of Clans. They get you back every day. Micro incentives here, there. Great rewards to be won. Every day you don't come in, you don't get your gold, you don't get your elixir. Uh, all of this stuff is there. How can we apply some of those ideas in our world? Great book by James Clear, Atomic Habits. And I've borrowed that sort of thinking to, for this idea called Atomic Rewards. Micro incentives, amazing results. So it's about small rewards, micro incentives for micro moments. That's how you can think about it. Simple idea to get customers to pay attention, pay them for their attention. Because if you don't, you will end up paying Google and Facebook 100 times more to get them back if they churn. Atomic rewards can nudge people everywhere in push messages, in properties that you own, your website and the app, and of course, in the physical code world. You can link it with QR codes. We'll see a few quick examples. So imagine this is an email. In the subject line, you see a mu. That's a sort of example of a currency or a token for attention. I have 972 points. I open this mail. I get one mu. It goes to 973. Instant feedback. Clicking can actually give, give me even greater rewards going forward. And all of these add up across brands. You look at uh, the Kindle uh, example that's there. Now imagine if they incentivized you five mu to actually read the first chapter. Okay, Once you read, then your likelihood of actually buying the book goes up. This one is there, uh, the ad that you see for Haseen Dilruba or other any such OTT programs. Imagine if there was a QR code which incentivized you for about 10 mu or so uh, by uh, clicking on the QR code, you watch the trailer. Now, what happens there is that the Netflix will get your identity. After having watched the trailer, you're likely to actually have a higher probability of watching the full series. This is a typical mail which comes in by these phones. Imagine there was a small incentive for clicking and seeing the features of the phone. That's really the option which is there. All of these moments today, which are missing, how can you convert them into magical moments in email actions via AMP, sharing personal preferences, QR codes, answering questions after an OTT episode, sampling new products, completing the habit loop in an app, or completing the streak, opening an app for three days in a row. All of these working towards creating those atomic habits. So atomic rewards, I think is a great idea to look at for driving engagement. We are still left with three questions to look at. Who will do it? How it will get done? And what's the impact? So short answers, who will do it? A new idea called Progency. It's a product-led agency. MarTech is complex. You've got to build on top of the MarTech platforms which are there. It's a next-gen agency built for MarTech. Combines right brain and left brain together. Creative, analytics, software, visualization, storytelling, all of it coming together. And it can be performance-based. And you think of some of the use cases here, retention, reactivation, etc. All of this can be really what are driven by the by progency, a progency like entity for MarTech. Very big question. How will it be funded? And the answer is rebudgeting. It's what I call the one rupee per customer per month solution. Invest one rupee per customer for messaging plus M's and atomic rewards, for building that hotline, for building that deep relationship with your customers. And you can save spending 100 rupees or more later on on reacquisition via Google and Facebook. For that, 
This split, 90% and 10% cannot work. It's got to become a balanced split between ad tech and martech. In fact, the more successful your martech program is, the less you will have to spend on the ad, ad tech side of things. To summarize, this is the flywheel that you can actually get going in your organization. It will require CEO and board push because many of these will cut across departments. So messaging plus M's, VRM, full stack, atomic rewards, progency and rebudgeting are really the foundations for the outcome, which is creating a company which is not only profitable, but can grow exponentially forever. So profitable growth is a given if your costs on acquisition can be brought down for which you need to get MarTech successful. Another idea is to get to uh, now businesses you can bring, build actually forever because of the idea of subscriptions. Okay, what's taking the SaaS world, B2B world by storm can now happen in the B2C and D2C worlds. And by having profitability, you can drive exponential growth, get into new markets and do it right. You basically become a profit poly. So maximize the profits in your industry, get the best customers in your vertical, maximize their lifetime value, and you will take away the oxygen of growth from all your competitors. And that's the best sustainable moat that you can really build in your business. So I'll pretty much stop there. Uh, this is a summary on the left side. And uh, you, you can get a lot more information uh, on many of these ideas on rajeshjain.com slash marketing. If you want a copy of the deck, just email me at rajesh at netcorecloud.com and I'll be glad to send it to you. And we've got a couple of a few minutes left for questions. Yeah. Okay, um, we've got uh, one question and we'll probably will have time for maybe uh, just that. Yeah. Uh, how will processes or active campaigns uh, be disrupted through the MarTech era? Okay, uh, so here's how you have to think of the MarTech era. Basically, that the focus really shifts entirely or to a large extent. I'm not saying you do away with ad tech. Of course, you need new customer acquisition, but you've got to give importance to existing customers. In almost every company, the most important number that's basically tracked is new customers, the naya naya. All of us are excited by new additions, new customers coming on. And very few of us really question what's happening with our existing customers, because that is the real problem. And if we can start thinking more deeply about what we can do with existing customers, if we can, and that will mean changing. Your question is right, that you have to change processes. You've got to change campaigns. You've got to think of how, even if my product is not bought every day, how can I get those 15 seconds of mental time every day from that brand or from that customer? Because then when that insurance has to be renewed, when that milk has to be ordered, or when something has to be bought, your brand will be top of mind. It's exactly how the physical world works for new customer acquisition. Okay, your branding is there all over, uh, what TV ads, print ads. But now that brands have the ability to set up the one-to-one -one relationship with customers, I think it's very important to think of the next uh, few years or next, the world going forward as being part of the MarTech era and not just about new customer acquisition. So yes, there will be disruptions. The ideas which I've talked about are the foundation for, for the new uh, disruptions that need to come. Back to you, Nia. Uh, Nia, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Uh, we are actually running on, uh, you know, on time. I just said there's one more question uh, yes. what, which just came in. If you can just quickly take it up. Sure. So the question is, for what purpose should companies use social media channels? I think social media channels are fantastic for two things, getting real time feedback on your products and service. And second is that every person on social media has their own mini network. They are all micro influencers. So the experiences that you create can help you get more new customers. It's a new form of referrals without you having to pay for it. Of course, you could incentivize them. So think of it for feedback. Uh, maybe even some of your uh, uh, customers who are more active, you can get them to co-create products idea and ideas with you. And very important, create great experiences which they can share, which will bring down your customer acquisition cost 
by getting referrals from the network that each of us has on social media. That's amazing, Rajesh. I mean, that is so true. Very well said. Well, uh, Rajesh, I must say it was such a great start to the day four, uh, right? And I think you said the tone really right. So I'm I'm sure that the audience also find it very informative. So I would like to thank you for your time, and I thanks to all our partners and attendees who are here with us today. Uh, well, stay tuned for our next sessions. Thank you. Thank you.